2024 was the year of the dragon. Do you know what 2025 is going to be? 2025 is going to be the year of the robot. Year of the robot. I want this thing. So just announced by Meta, it's an open source approach to robotics, to training robots to do stuff around the house for you in a simulation before deploying them into the real world. Now, as you know, a lot of these Frontier AI labs and other companies are moving into having these augmented reality glasses or goggles or some sort of a VR headsets that allow you to kind of have an overlay over the actual world that you're seeing. Now, imagine a little robot dog running around behind you, following you everywhere you go, following your every command. Little speech and thought bubbles appear above its head that only you can see. You tell it what to do, you can see what it's thinking. You can see its reasoning steps. The goal is eventually for it to help you with your household tasks. Cleaning up, cooking, folding laundry, whatever. It's basically at your heel, ready to do whatever you want it to do. So this is the idea of a human-robot collaboration. So it's not really a robot that's trained to be fully autonomous and just go about its business, ignoring all humans in its way. It's meant to be your partner. And Meta is releasing a, what they're calling partner, spelled with a lot of the uh, vowels missing, an open source benchmark with tons of data sets consisting part of human demonstrations. This is where it's a little bit different. It has a human in the loop. So as a human, you can sit there and kind of like in a game of Sims, click on stuff and see how the robot reacts. You can have a VR headset walking around and kind of uh, simulating the robot's response. This allows it to be trained in a simulation to accomplish this task. And once it's trained, we're able to take it out of the simulation, put it into an actual real life robot that can run around and help you in the real world environment. And I got some big breakthroughs with this thing too. An 8.6 times increase in speed. One of the approaches that used, used smaller LLMs for the robot's reasoning, which increased its speed without really losing any accuracy in its ability to understand and follow instructions. Currently, the benchmark has 100,000 natural language tasks set across 60 realistic simulated homes and over 5,800 unique 3D objects. This makes Partner the largest benchmark of its kind for studying collaborative planning and reasoning in household tasks. So one interesting thing here is they actually use large language models to create a bunch of tasks in order to train these robots on. So AI is coming up with the tasks uh, sort of uh, to do the training pipeline and to train the robots in a simulation. So let's take a look, quick look at the intro video that they posted that kind of goes over some of the things that, that are happening. And later we'll dive into some of the details. Let's check it out. Typically when we see a robot, it's working in isolation. But that won't be our future. Robots and humans live and work side by side, communicate naturally. At Metafair, we have made research breakthroughs that are getting us much closer to socially intelligent robots that can enhance our daily lives. What we've accomplished is first of its kind and evaluated at scale, making it advanced enough that it is easy to imagine what it can mean for our busy lives. Tidying up, taking deliveries, helping cook, the possibilities are endless. We have set benchmarks for everyday tasks and developed a data set now with over 100,000 natural language instructions. So with this data set, we have trained a large planning model that reasons and plans for everyday tasks in dynamic environments, including in the presence of humans. Our Habitat 3 platform is the fastest simulator for training AI models with robots and humans together. And with our simulation training, we can generate data in the thousands resulting in models that are faster than state-of-the-art. Our work is focused on human-robot collaboration. Today, we are using a mixed reality headset. Communication is natural and conversational. For example, in this demo, I'm thirsty, can you get something to drink? Prompts a search for a water bottle or a can. Demonstrating the model's dynamic planning and replanning capabilities in a complex environment that hasn't been specifically trained in. And when a human is present, the model adjusts and replans its actions based on the human's actions. For example, in the demo, let's clean up the living room. When a toy the robot was intending to pick up is removed, the model replans and moves on to another toy. This is a result of innovative AI training using over 200 simulated homes in our Habitat 3.0 platform, where we have added human-like avatars. Once trained, the same embodied AI drives a robot's real-world experience. 
And now we don't have to learn from scratch in real world environments, but can deploy models learned in simulation directly onto a robot. With the breakthrough large planning model research work we've done at Metafair, a future where we can collaborate with a robot that can reason and plan to our benefit is not far away. So a lot of cool things here, including that a lot of this is open source. In fact, for one of these things, they're suggesting a robot that you can use to start training it at home in your own home environment. Everything's on GitHub, so it's part of Facebook research. It's called Home Robot. Here's one of the possible kind of robots that they're, it seems like, recommending. So it's about 25000 So it's still, while it's still expensive, I feel like as this rolls out more and more, as it becomes more and more usable in actual homes, a lot of these prices got to start coming down. So this thing, for example, can kind of uh, like a Roomba with a few huge, you know, a handle and arm attached go around your home and uh, do various tasks like get you drinks, get you coffee, etc. You can do remote teleoperation and also is designed for autonomous operation. I'm just beginning to dive into some of this because I haven't really heard about this before. It seems like they had Habitat 1.0. So which trained virtual robots to navigate in 3D scans of real homes and Habitat 2.0, which trained virtual robots to clean up houses by rearranging objects. And this is kind of like one of the new things is Habitat 3.0, a simulation designed to train models for human robot collaboration. And yeah, it definitely seems like Meta is very serious about building out a lot of the stuff open source. And of course, it would be very good for them for, you know, Facebook and all the various social media stuff, like if it's everything's running on there, certainly that's that's great for the company. Everybody's gunning after this, right? Google has their own version. Recently, OpenAI announced that they're building out their own sort of department and hiring people for the various robotic tasks. Apple is making some big gains in robotics, announcing various things that will kind of move with emotion, with like a lifelike elegance, almost human-like. So Apple's Elegant, as they're calling it. So as you can see, that little um, Pixar-like uh, lamp kind of just like uh, grooving and uh, dancing to the beat or whatever it's doing. But that's kind of like what Apple's focusing on. So a lot of people are trying to build their sort of robotic things, whether it's like humanoids or something like a lamp, perhaps. Putting more and more of that stuff into our homes, into our houses. Of course, it seems like Meta is providing a lot of this stuff open source, which seems like it would be huge for developers that are looking to kind of get into this space. And notice here that both they and Apple's new thing, both of them are kind of aiming for this idea of robot human collaboration. So this robot by Apple, it's going to be expressive, right? So instead of just doing the thing you're trying to do, it's trying to kind of show the human like, oh yeah, I'm so happy to do this thing or whatever, right? You can point at stuff, but again, it's not there to do some tasks autonomously by itself with no input. It's there to be a collaborator, to be a, to be a partner for you in whatever tasks that you're doing. So in this case, it's a lamp. In Meta's case, it can be a dog or whatever form it takes. And as cool as the Apple thing may or may not be, I'm a lot more excited about this. Open source robotics seems to be such an incredible thing to get into. I personally always have believed that there's going to be large language models in everything. They're going to be in your thermostat. I mean, we're seeing with the Apple device, that lamp is basically guided by some sort of artificial intelligence. You know, they do mention that there's going to be voice commands, a voice that sounds suspiciously like Siri. So, I mean, there's going to be large language models in those things determining what to do and how to carry out certain tasks that you tell it to. So it's going to be in your lamp. It's going to be in everything. And of course, some of those use cases are going to be gobbled up by the big companies, Google, Apple, etc. But there's going to be a massive, massive open white space for these open source robotics for everyday people, developers that are interested in in some particular one specific use case and they'll be able to build that out while relying on you know some support from meta and other people that are supporting the open source efforts from the open source community and of course nvidia is doing a lot of stuff with open source as well as there's more and more demand for these robots i feel like the prices are going to start coming down eventually once the kind of like the supply chains catch up so i am very optimistic we're going to start seeing some of these things hit household use this year 2025 we're already seeing them being employed in you know factory productions bmw is using figure one i believe or one of the figure humanoid robots to to do some of the production and the fact that training these robots looks like a game of sims is also kind of awesome is it not take a look at this clip about habitat 3.0 this sort of simulation training of these robot human collaborators these partners take a look habitat 3.0 is a simulator designed to develop social embodied agents 
that assist and cooperate with humans. It supports both humanoid avatars and robots, thus allowing the study of collaborative human-robot tasks in home-like environments. To ensure generalization of our AI models, our simulator offers a wide array of human poses and appearances with multiple gender representations and body shapes. Furthermore, our simulator supports a broad spectrum of actions ranging from simple behaviors like walking and waving to more complex behaviors like interacting with objects. Diversity extends to the scenes as well, as Habitat 3.0 utilizes the Habitat Synthetic Scenes dataset, a collection of over 200 scenes and over 18,000 objects. Another pivotal feature of Habitat 3.0 is a human-in-the-loop tool facilitating interactive evaluation of AI agents. Through this tool, humans can collaborate with autonomous robots using mouse and keyboard or a virtual reality interface. Aiming at reproducible and standardized benchmarking, Habitat 3.0 presents two collaborative human-robot tasks. The first task, called Social Navigation, involves the robot finding and following a humanoid avatar while maintaining a safe distance. Think of scenarios like having a video call while moving around your home. The second task, Social Rearrangement, involves the robot working collaboratively with the humanoid avatar to rearrange a set of objects from their initial placement to their desired location. The agents must coordinate to achieve this goal together as efficiently as possible. We conduct an in-depth study of different baselines on both tasks. Here we show one of our end-to-end -end learned policies on the social navigation task. The robot adeptly navigates an unseen environment, locating and following the humanoid avatar while maintaining a safe distance. Notice that the robot will yield space to the avatar, allowing their unobstructed movement. Here's an episode of the social rearrangement task, where a learned policy efficiently splits the task between the robot and the humanoid avatar, improving efficiency over the avatar operating alone. These findings also extend to our human-in-the-loop study, where learned robot policies enhance the human's efficiency. Please refer to the detailed results sections in the paper. So I don't know about you, I didn't have a chance to go through all this quite yet, but I am extremely, extremely excited about the open source sort of nature, the approach that they're doing here. And I guarantee you, we're going to be seeing a lot more about this very, very soon. Make sure you're subscribed if you made this far. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you next time.